Dad. Yeah. You're gonna be good today? Yep. Dog number 10. Marble. Yeah. Why do you think I'm gonna send you that way? You're all squared up to go to the right. What happens if I send you to the left? You're all screwed up. You're supposed to square up straight. Uh -huh. You're not too worried here. Yeah, let's get the let's get the goose dog at age, yeah. Your dad's videotaping. <laughs> so we're working here on just teaching her patience. You ready? Nice girl. Yeah, you're starting to connect with me. I know you want loving now. I know you're, you, that's about her attention span. Yeah. 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 And here, Marble. Hey! There you go. There you go. Nice. There you go. Now you're cooking. You're cooking. Girl. I don't use a lot of recall whistles. She knows where I am. In other words, a lot of people be new on it. The whole time the dog's coming in, they be mm -hmm. no reason to. She knows her job is to bring it to me. Hey, you ain't well. You ain't well. You try to just use like a catcher's mitt. This is where I want her to bring that bird. Nice. Yeah. The first one, she was, when she first trapped it on the ground, she wanted to mouth it just a little bit. The <laughs> bird is perfectly like, hey! Stop. Mine now. Mine now. Get on. about it did you see how she was kind of like oh he's calling me but mm, do i really want to right <laughs> then she decided no nah, i think i better come down right. you're doing good you're doing good yeah. Yeah.
was still real reliant on the verbal cum than she was on the whistle cum. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're just trying to, then we bring her in and we praise her for a minute. To the point that when I just go just a little bit, I don't have to keep playing on the whistle. Okay. I go, and she's going to float into me. But like I was saying, right off the get go, she's got so much horsepower, this is going to be a main part of your, your training is just this part. You know, she knows how to find birds, she's got a good nose, she knows how to run the winds. But maintenance on the, on the control. She's jumping in the air. That's exactly what we use clip wing for right there. That's what they call a hard drive. Oh, yeah. You bend over. If you put them in your vest and they're not folded over like that, they can just fly out of your pockets. Wings first. I'm doing seven today. They may not get up quite as and fly quite like I'd like them to. If this breeze stayed like it is right now, they should be able to catch the wind. And all I want the duck bird to really do is fly for about 100 yards or less at the most. So when you set the bird, are you undoing their wings then? Yeah. And just letting the tape do the work to yep. restrict their flight? Yep, I, I, still, I still dizzy the bird which there's lots of information as far as planting pigeons. You dizzy them so they lose their orientation. But then when you throw them in, you want it to kind of be that they're... You want to kind of throw them hard enough. Hard enough that you don't hurt them, but also hard enough that it kind of jolts them awake a little bit. It's trickier when you don't have tape on them. Because you don't want to... First time I ever... Was, my mentor showed me how to do it. I was all excited. He showed me how to plant pigeons. And I said, okay, I got this under control. And he said, yeah, go do your thing. And so I went and did my thing. And spun one, threw it in, watched it fly off. Did that, <laughs> did that about six in a row. And then threw one in and it didn't fly and we're getting the right touch on them. Yeah. Especially when we get to yeah, we're gonna go through a transition in marble where she got still a couple of dead ones just to mix it in. Mm -hmm. These flyers. We're more worried right now is her handling of the live birds, but clip wings keep their flush alive. It keeps them driving. That's why you want that bird it senses the dog's presence, the dog is making game on it, and you want that bird to lift up a, almost like a trout hitting a fly. Okay. You know, you want them to, or think of those great whites hitting those seals coming breaching out of the water, that's kind of what you want the, the dog to be doing on these flip wing pigeons. But at this stage, we also want to launch this, this pigeon out, marvel to chase it, and when she's out at the distance, I can fire the cap pistol or the 20 gauge or the, you know, I do a progression from the cap gun to the 20 gauge to the 12 gauge before I actually physically shoot a bird for her. Okay. And what I do is I throw it out there and a week ago she was you know, 100 yards away. Now when she's about 40 yards away I go bang bang. And it, I'm looking for any warning sign. If she's chasing hard and all of a sudden she peels around to go, hey, what was that noise? Then you better back it up a little bit and slow down. Okay. When you forge ahead, if you see a warning sign like that, uh, when you forge ahead, it's a really good way to make a dog gun sign. So they're more worried about what the noise was than they were about retrieving the bird. And this is all, all this introduction is based on that intensity to, to want to retrieve. 
usually what I do is when the bird hits its apex and it starts declining like this just like if you shot a bird bang bang and it starts falling so you see the bird start losing altitude bang bang and if it keeps going it builds up their drive some dogs some dogs are lazy marvel's not a lazy dog marvel will chase him away <laughs> and she's actually just in the She's had a couple that she's come up short on. She has a good mark on them. She takes the line. And I mean, we're talking long work trays. We're talking 150 yard stuff. And she'll loop the wind and use her nose to, to sort it out. That's what you want. I know it's taboo in the retriever game to use their nose to, to drift or whatever. But there's lots of reasons that. I do it. This one spin them. Here's what I was saying at the truck. You want to kind of, if the cover was heavier, that bouncing also creates a, a hotter nest. We don't have, we have this hummus and kind of not real uniform cover, so it's a little trickier, but if you were in a uniform, piece of grass you want almost like a bowl shape thing and then the wind hits the bird in the bowl and the bird's not inclined to, to walk I wouldn't be doing the rubber bands if I had real uniform undergrowth because mm -hmm. once that bird's kind of in that that nest it's going to stay there okay the problem with overdoing too many of the dead birds is there's no excitement, there's no life. So the dog goes in, it smells, it has a kind of a find on it. It gets closer and then it kind of goes, oh, here it is and picks it up. Well, from a competitive dog's standpoint, it can force them a little bit to do what they call sight hunting. Okay. In other words, they won't drive in um, hard. If you wait, if you do it, overdo it too much, and let's say this cover gets a lot higher, and then that dog's starting to scenting is lousy, and they start looking for the birds, you're probably just gonna have a good gun dog and not a competitive dog. You know, good crawl stuff, you can get by.